capital budgeting. Topic two, looking at non-discounted cash flow methods. Let's look at some of those alternatives. Sometimes performing a full discounted cash flow, DCF, analysis is too costly or too time consuming, or both. Some managers seek out quicker and cheaper methods of evaluating investment decisions. Typical non-discounted cash flow methods of performing capital budgeting analysis include the quote payback period method and the average accounting return, AAR method. In practice, payback period and AAR are considered quite weak alternatives to DCF analysis with respect to accuracy. However, they can serve as useful back in the napkin type of calculations to see if you are quote in the ballpark of whether or not this would work or not. Helps you kind of figure out should I kind of proceed to the next step and perform the full blown DCF. Okay. The payback period method simply determines how many years an investment outlay will pay itself back. So for example, if there's a 100K outlay, so if I spend $100,000 and it's required, um, it, we anticipate it will earn 50K per year for the next four years, the investment pays itself back in two years. That is, the investment outflow of 100K is paid back 50K in the first year, 50K in the second year, so completely paid back at the end of year two. So 100K divided by 50K equals two for a payback period of 2K. This method is quick, but it also suffers from significant problems. The first being, it does not consider financing costs as a discount rate in DCF analysis implicitly represents financing costs. Another one is, it's not linked to any economic reality. A payback period has no comparator. Is two years good? Is it bad? Is 15 years good? Bad. It really just depends. Another shortfall is the method performs poorly for projects with uneven cash flows. If a project requires 100K and then generates 120K, then requires another 100K to be invested before generating more cash inflows, how is the payback evaluated? So, it's better than nothing, but still with significant uh, shortfalls. The average accounting return, which is often also referred to as the accrual accounting rate of return, so AAR or AARR, <laughs> is a measure of income divided by the investment amount. It is AAR, so an increase in after-tax income, less the depreciation associated with the project, divided by the net initial investment. <sighs> this one I personally like even less. We don't typically see this in CPA, but I wanted to bring it up uh, because uh, it is it, it can be used kind of out there in the real world as well as um, just an item to kind of examine because it is the one that takes into account the depreciation associated um, with the project. So, Again, the shortfalls include it doesn't consider any financing costs of the project, so any of that, you know, interest paid. And it also uses accounting figures rather than cash flow figures, which are not closely linked to the cash flows. And this could create a risk of failure because it fails to consider the importance of cash management. Okay. So, you know, non cash items being included in here. Um, all right. Time to look at a question. You are the controller for a public company are attending a meeting about company strategy with a number of executives. One executive proposes a project that will cost $1 million immediately and then generate returns in the next four years of 250,000, 400,000, 300,000, and 700,000 respectively. You decide to quickly examine the opportunity. What is the payback period? Is it A? about two years and 11 months? B, about four years? C, three years, one month? Or D, about three years and four months? What do you think? Hint, try to pause the video and give this a go. Try to, I don't know, noodle it out, um, put it in a timeline and kind of figure out when would this million dollar outflow be repaid? Welcome back. 
If you said C, approximately three years and one month, you would be correct. So the project by the end of year three would have generated $950,000. And since year four will generate $700,000, we know that the investment will be fully paid off somewhere in the fourth year. So somewhere between years three and four. Okay, so we know that this ain't the number or answer, and we know that this ain't the number answer. So since $50,000, that difference between $950,000, which we will have generated by the end of year three, and the $1 million that we're trying to figure out the payback period for, since $50,000 divided by $700,000, the amount that will be earned during year four, equals 7%, and 7% of a year is about 26 days, the project will be paid off in approximately three years and one month. All right, two videos down, one to go. I will see you in the next. Keep up the great work.